Don Meade. Don Meade. I think it's the third time we've done this, Don. I'm really looking forward to speaking with you, my trading warrior brother. You are now the presenter, and welcome back to FACE, Don. Thank you so much, Dale. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, I can hear you. I can see your charts here, Don. So, uh, uh, first question is, uh, after the break in December, the magnitude of the recovery surprised me. How about you? It surprised me indeed. Um, but as I'm going to show you in a few minutes, it uh, it's not totally uh, out of place or a stranger or something that hasn't happened before. As Livermore okay. always says, everything that happens in the market has happened before and will happen again. I like that. And uh, your tweet uh, made mention of us making the same mistake for 89 years now. So uh, can you tell us and the viewers and listeners uh, what you meant by that statement? Absolutely. Well, we're going to talk today about warnings and setups. You know, bear markets don't just happen. They don't appear out of nowhere. They, uh, they follow long periods of setup or warning and we're going to show those today in fact we're going to show 89 years of uh, setups for bear markets that followed um, it takes time to turn a battleship around oh it sure does it sure does you think of the QE2 out in the middle of the ocean uh, heading heading uh, let's say uh, west if, if you wanted to turn that battleship or if you want to turn that cruise liner in this case uh, going east, it takes a long time to turn that big mama around. Yeah, which in the market we would call distri distribution, distributing yes. stock to people. Absolutely. Okay, so uh, I'm going to shut up for a while. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. Um, thanks. I'll start by just a couple of opening comments. Um, at the top of every uh, is this part up here in the corner uh, covering part of my screen or not? Uh, you, your whole screen is up. Oh, good. You're okay. Good. At the top of every page of Seven Sentinels, you're going to see these words, the most powerful trading concept on earth, period. And that trading concept consists of three simple words and at the end of this interview i'm going to tell you what those three words are so let's hold that thought for the moment um jesse livermore wrote in reminiscence of a stock operator that most traders give far less thought to any given stock purchase as they do to the decision to buy what he called in those days a motor car okay so by extension we would wonder uh, how many that would buy uh, an auto would do so if they had compelling evidence to show them that that particular auto was almost certain to crash within the first few months uh, it was owned by the buyer? Okay, but, Don, Don, do you know if uh, Jesse wrote that book before he committed suicide? He. I'm kidding. Well, he, he had to have. He didn't actually write the book himself. He, oh, okay. Uh, Jesse, uh, 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 Edwin Laferve was a writer in those days okay. who sat with Jesse Livermore for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds, thousands of hours interviewing him. And everything that is in that book was written by Edwin Laferve in the voice of, of uh, a fictional character who was, in fact, Jesse Livermore. So okay. the book is true, but it's based on life experiences of Jesse Livermore. Okay. Um, and it was well, it's a lousy joke anyway. Pardon? And, and I learned. So, uh, you know, I thought he wrote it. So uh, interesting, uh, uh, it's called Operations of a Stock Operator, right? Yes, Reminiscences of a Stock Reminiscence. Operator. Reminiscences, okay. Um, Everyone should read it. And you may know, uh, just as a side note here, that in the 1929 uh, to 32 bear market, Jesse Livermore turned his trading account into over $100 million, which in today's dollars is $1.2 billion. And he started from $5. 
In fact, his first and last job was when he was a teenager as a board marker for for one of the brokerage firms. He spent his entire life doing nothing but trading. And uh, he was an interesting character to be sure, but I've learned more from Jesse Livermore than from, from anybody else. Um, let's take a look at how uh, markets do uh, set up or prepare for bear markets. First of all, we're going to start by talking about the McClellan Oscillator. What you're looking at right here is, I'm going to see if I can drop that off my screen. Oh, well. Anyway, what you're looking at right here is the uh, Standard & Poor's 500 over the last uh, seven months. Here was the standard, the S&P 500 coming down from the October, September high of 2018 to its low on Christmas Eve. And here is that bear market rally that you and I began this conversation talking about okay. that has been indeed one heck of a rally, 650 points or 550 R points, I guess it is. Relentless. On the standard pours 500. What you're looking at next is the McClellan Oscillator, and I assume that most listeners here are familiar with the McClellan Oscillator, but it is a measure of market breadth. It uses moving averages of the advanced decline line to measure market breadth, and when the McClellan Oscillator is at a high number, it means that the upside momentum in the market is very strong, like back in here. Boom, it comes up to a high number. As the rally goes on, the upside momentum weakens. Now, that is a McClellan Oscillator. Now let's talk about the really important part for today's uh, dissertation, if you will, uh, and that is the McClellan Summation Index. Okay. If you take the, the McClellan Oscillator reading each day and add it to the running total through the prior day, um, you will have the summation index. So if the McClellan Oscillator readings are positive readings, then each edition will take the summation index higher. If the McClellan oscillator readings are uh, negative numbers, then that will take the summation index lower. So since that low on Christmas Eve right here, um, we saw the market rally up. But during that period, the summation index initially went substantially higher all through January and into late February. Is this then what most a, uh, technicians, Don, were using uh, for the case of uh, breath market breath making new highs? Back yes. There? Okay. Yes, absolutely. Then there came a time when, as the Standard & Poor's continued going up through March and April, the summation index was actually falling. And that's what's been going on now since late February. We've had an advancing Standard & Poor's against a falling summation index. This is key to today's discussion. Because if we go back now and look at 1930, well, first of all, yes, this is 1930. Uh, Look at the similarity in that pattern, Dale. Uh, you see the 1929 market peaking in August. Sounds familiar, doesn't it? <laughs> the 2018 market peaked in August. Then we see it coming down and and uh, and kind of crashing into late in the year. And yep. then late in two, uh, 1929, when it when it finally hit a bottom, it began advancing clear into April of 1930, very much like this chart of 2018-2019. You see the similarity. Yeah, uh, the one similarity I don't see, Don, is the magnitude of the retracement. Does that exactly. bother you? Exactly. The magnitude has not been the same, although uh, in percentage terms it has been, but the magnitude of the... Uh, 
uh, rebound in 1930 was not as strong as the magnitude of the rebound in 2019, but the pattern is the same, and it's a okay. pattern that we're going to be talking about today. And each one of these things that you're talking about are one of your sentinels. No, uh, no, no, we're not actually aren't. going to be talking about the sentinels oh, themselves okay. today. We're, going to, we're just going to talk about the summation index and how okay. it warns us of an oncoming bear market. Okay, Don. Um, as we came up in 1930 from that November crash low, um, you see that the summation index was advancing with the Dow Jones Industrial Average. They're advancing together uh, through uh, November, December, January, February of 1930. They're advancing together. Then there came a point where um, in February of 1930, the Dow Jones Industrial Average continued advancing, but the summation index began declining. Sounds familiar. We just talked about that because that's occurring right now in the year 2019. Ultimately, what that led to, and here it is again, the, uh, the Dow Jones is advancing and it's still advancing, but there came a point when the summation started going down as it was advancing that ultimately led to now back way up. <coughs> Excuse me, I still have a cold. I'm getting over, but that, uh, if we back way up, now we're looking at about a three-year chart of the Dow Jones Industrial Average so that you can see this period that we just looked at as part of this overall chart. This mm -hmm. is the 1929 low. This is the rally into 1930. This is when the uh, Dow is going up with the summation, confirming it all along. And here's where the Dow then starts going up and the summation is declining okay. um, into April of 1930. That was the warning. We had a healthy advance in the market with the summation confirming. Then we had a an unhealthy advance in the Dow 30 with the uh, summation declining. And that was the warning, Dale, and that led to <laughs> The uh, 1930, 31, 32 uh, bear market that ultimately took the market from the 1929 high by down by some 90 percent. Again, as you pointed out, the uh, amplitude of, of the move in 1930 is very different than the amplitude of the move in, in 2018-19, but the pattern is the same. Let's look for the same pattern. Uh, well, let's let's go forward a few years to 55 years ago. Interesting, another Fibonacci number because we just looked at 89 years ago. 55 right. years ago, uh, as we were in 1973-74, um, again, the markets were moving up. This is the Dow Jones Industrial Average mm -hmm. with the summation index confirming all the way up in in uh, late 71 into 72. Then there came a long period of time in 1972 where as the standard, as the Dow Jones Industrial Average was moving higher, the summation index was moving lower. That was during uh, what what they called the Nifty 50 era. I don't know if you're, uh, I remember. you're, you're probably old enough as I am to remember that. Yep. When there were like 50 stocks, Disney and Xerox and IBM and McDonald's and and uh, and so on that that were the top 50 stocks, but the broad market was not following. Okay, then so in you got to pull back. You do good. Okay, so uh, let me ask you this: uh, You can't use it as a timing tool. It's more of a bias tool. Would you exactly. say that? Exactly. We have okay. plenty of timing tools here at SevenSentinels.com, but this is not okay. one of them. This is okay. a this is a broad warning over time that that tells okay. you the setup that we're in. Okay. Yes, thank you for pointing that out. Okay, then in late '72, again, we have a healthy period where the Dow is going up confirmed by the summation, then we have a period of time where, again, the um, uh, Dow keeps going up, but the summation is falling. That immediately preceded, boom, the great bear market of 1973, 74. That lasted till 82. Yeah, well, yes. It was a big range, I mean. You yeah, know, it uh, did. Uh, it was in a secular bear market, really, from 1960. Yeah. 
85 to 82, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, but this particular cyclical bear market right. lasted from uh, the peak in 73 into a low in late 74. But you see the, the setup and then the outcome. A lot of these declines about 18 months down or two years. Uh, yes. Uh, bear markets. I'd say 18 months is a good average figure. I've used 18 months as an average figure for some time. Okay. Uh, although 1932 was more like three years. Yeah. Uh, and there have been a few that have been as short as maybe six, seven, eight months. Um, okay. Let's skip to 1980. Same thing. The uh, standard and pores is moving up. Summation is going up with it. And then we have a long period of time where the summation, the Dow Jones is going up and the summation is falling. Warning period. And boom, this is what followed in uh, 1980, 81, 82. Again, here's your 18 months, Dale. Um, yeah. Then in uh, 1987, uh, everybody yeah. remembers the crash of 87. That crash of 87 didn't come out of the blue. That was no big surprise to the people that were paying attention to what the summation index was saying, because as the market was going up, there was a healthy period where the summation was going up. And then all through 87, the uh, standard and pores kept going up and up and up and up. And the summation index was falling and that led to boom, the crash of 1987. Yeah, I went down uh, stairs from my office, took the elevator downstairs to see if the bank was still open. Yep. <laughs> and I, I went in there and they go, I, I go, well, the market's crashed. And they go, oh. I said, all right, uh, I'd like to make a withdrawal. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you weren't yeah. the only person. Uh, uh, oh, no, it was empty. There, there was, only, there was no, pan withdrawal. no panic in the streets, only on the Quotron machines. Yeah. 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 The green screens, right, man? Exactly. So, all they right. Turned so, red that day. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, so, so going on, same thing again in 1998. Uh, Asian uh, contagion. Uh, same same setup, yeah. As setting as this this is leading into the the 2000 market top, long period of healthy advance, and then a long period of unhealthy advance, as I call it, where the yeah. averages are moving higher, summation is moving down. That was the warning. Here's what happened initially in '98. Then we had it. Uh, this whole thing continued in '99, advancing market, falling summation, and Boom, here's what happened over the period of 2000, 2001, 2002. Yeah. Um, most here probably traded through that market and remember it well. But the warnings were there, and that's my point today. Uh, but well, they yeah, were ignored. I'm for my Those... WorldCom stock today. Pardon me? WorldCom. Or, uh, you know, I'm talking about things that went away. Anything.com. Yeah. All the things that went yes. away. The big yeah. dot com. Bubble. There were survivors, you know. There was uh, Cisco, and you know. Well, Amazon actually came out of yeah. that. That's right. Yeah. Uh, so there. So there at every end, there's a new, at every uh, end, there's a new beginning. Yes. Oh, good. Well said. Okay. Uh, 2006, same thing. Healthy advance, unhealthy advance with the uh, summation declining and boom, here's what followed. Uh, 2007, everybody remembers the peak in 2007, the real estate boom. Yeah. Uh, here we have healthy advance. Here we have the unhealthy advance. Advance all through May, June, July of uh, eighty of uh, two thousand seven, setting us up for boom. This whole thing that occurred in two thousand seven, two thousand eight. Uh, my point again is nothing happens out of the blue. We had adequate warnings, and those warnings were ignored by the crowd. <clears throat> Excuse me again. Okay. Uh, that takes us up to 2015. We all remember 2015. Here's that healthy period in early 2015 as the summation was going up. But then here's this long sustained period from May, June, July of 2018. Seemed long at the time. Well, the S&P was making new highs, but look at this summation. It's just going steadily lower, 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 and look what that led to. Again, boom. The warnings were there. 
uh, they went unheeded by most, but those who were paying attention traded, uh, at least got out of the way of this, let's hope, and uh, many of us traded it short. It was a marvelous market for that for that period, or for that uh, purpose. Um, 2018, here we are, uh, last year. As the market came up all through 2018, made highs in the um, first in June, the you see the summation advancing. Then starting in June, the market continued going up into its high around uh, September 1st. And look at this summation, down, 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 all through July, August, into September as Standard & Poor's was making new highs. And Let me ask you this, John, from the, the initial yep. momentum peak of the summation index yes. to where it begins to decline. Is there yes. an average time period before the market recognizes it? Yeah, there's an average, but I don't, I, yeah. don't, uh, okay. I don't believe much in averages. You know, if your feet are in the freezer and your head is in the oven, would you say on average you feel pretty good? Uh, it depends what I'm garnished with. Right, right. You got okay, it. but anyway, I thought <laughs> anyway, it looks like my to point me, is just that an observation looked like six, eight months. Uh, from, it is, it is, know. and that is a good observation. I, I do talk about averages a lot, but the, the okay. problem is that we a lot of things fall outside of the averages. But yes, right. yes, yeah. that is okay. that, that is an excellent observation. So where does that uh, leave us right now? Here we are, 2019. Uh, as the market came off of that December 24th low, rallied, 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 uh, there came a time at the end of February where this healthy stage of advance, and in this case it was about three months, uh, came to an end as the market was, as the, the uh, summation index began going down. That's been going on for now like two months. In fact, uh, when you take a look at the <clears throat> Excuse my cold here, but when you look at the um, current market, uh, it looks an awful lot like the 1930 in shape, not magnitude, as you correctly point out, but in shape, it looks almost exactly like the 1930 market all over again. And so uh, what are we set up for now? Well, uh, the crowd is as bullish as ever. They're out there buying, buying, buying. But those uh, serious traders who are paying attention are buttoned up and ready for for the decline. Now, uh, you asked me about signals, um, uh, uh, timing tools. We have plenty of timing tools, and we're just waiting for the ultimate signal that could come as early as today that takes us into the next stage of decline. We'll talk about that in a on another interview. But at any rate, um, we've been talking about 89 years of warning, and it makes me think of a, a, a line from the movie um, Margin Call. Did you ever see that, Dale? No. Uh -uh. I, yeah, I still, I'm going to tell you again, like I did the last interview, you've got to watch that movie. It is so good. Is it on cable, or uh, where do I find it? Oh, if you when, have uh, when was on it demand, made? if you have on yeah. demand, you'll find it on on one of the Showtime okay. or, or HBO okay. or one of those. I do. Uh, or I have a long find... weekend. I I promise to do my homework this time, Don. Watch Margin Call. You're going to love it. But okay. these guys in 2007, 2008 figured out that the markets were getting ready to crash. In their case, it was the bond markets. And at one point, when they figured this out and they're getting ready to take action on it, they're driving around the streets on their way back to the office. And one of the characters, Peter Sullivan, says, he says, look at all those people wandering around with absolutely no idea what's about to happen. And yeah. I, I feel that way many times when I watch a setup take place like this. Uh, Sometimes I wish I were them. them. Pardon me? Sometimes I wish I were them. Yeah, yeah. But my point is we don't have to be bystanders. We don't have yeah, to be uh, sitting around in, in ignorance. We can pay attention. We can see these signals. And we've been talking about warnings today. Um, there's on on uh, I think the Chinese have a saying about something something about a, a, on a coin. Uh, the, the two sides of it are, are crisis on one side yeah. and opportunity on the other. This 
crisis that is formulating now for markets for the next couple of years is a major opportunity for those that know how to step up and, and uh, take advantage of it. The danger of a crisis is to miss the opportunity. Uh, yeah, very good. I like that. Can I quote you on that? Yeah. <laughs> okay. It's a, it's a, it's, I stole it from the Chinese. It's my derivation of the Chinese expression. I was just going to say that. You know, you and I, in many ways, are cut from the same cloth, Don. And uh, I really recommend people go check Don out and his website. And uh, uh, at the minimum, follow him on Twitter at Seven Sentinels. And uh, uh, Andy Kaufman is his icon who does a little, uh, you know, little Elvis. I'm all shook up. Uh-huh. And, uh, <laughs> Thank you very uh, much. Yeah. So, uh, Don, a great presentation with this, and uh, thanks. I did. Uh, want, uh, I did tell you I was going to give you three words at the end of this oh, show, yes. uh, program that uh, explain on it what we mean by the greatest uh, concept on earth for traders, and that is price follows breadth. If you don't remember anything else from today's interview, remember price follows breadth. Breadth gives you uh, the pathway to what price is going to do in the future. You need to follow it. So, so that's it. And I will say one last thing, and that is if you go to the 7 sentinelscom website, we are running a limited time trial of 17 days for just nine dollars and 95 cents if you click on there it'll get you all set up so that's it for today uh dale i thank you so much it's, it's always a real pleasure to be with you don uh happy easter and happy easter. uh have a great weekend and really uh you know by now that we're brothers in more than one way absolutely. as trading warrior brother absolutely and i and uh Don uses the term rainmaker trades, which is, you know, you could be out there in the fields and you really need the rain so your crop could come in and have a bountiful harvest. And uh, may you ride this decline and max it out, Don, and all your subscribers uh, reap the, the harvest with you. Thank you so much, Dale. I really appreciate it. Okay, everyone. That's Don Mead at Seven Sentinels, and that's a wrap for the week. Remember, don't just count your pips, count your blessings. Thank you, Hammond. Happy Easter to you. Don, good hunting, and do your work over the weekend and watch Margin Call. Happy Easter, Alina, and see everyone on Monday. Thanks once again, Don Mead. Thank you. Adios, space and investing.com. See you next week.